magic of the trolley bus. Bournemouth was, in fact, the furthest point west in England to operate a trolley bus system, and our opening shots from July 1962 find the members of the Southern Counties Touring Society aboard this pre-war open topper. Bournemouth also had the distinction at this particular time of running both the oldest and the newest trolley buses in the country. This was one of three Park Royal bodied sunbeams, originally built in 1935 but converted to open top in 1958, which we see now arriving at Tuckton Bridge to the eastern side of the town. Some 10 miles an hour. ancient Christchurch route terminates at the Priory and due to the narrow streets the trolley bus has to be turned by hand. The merits of the trolley bus are now well known. They include maneuverability. Note the way the bus is able to negotiate the traffic. Note too how it pulls into the curb to load and unload, thus providing the greatest safety for its passengers and the least obstruction to overtaking traffic. In its general performance on the road, however, the trolley bus is unique. Its effortless speed, hill climbing ability, quietness of running and absence of smell combine to make it a most attractive vehicle from the point of view of the passenger. At Bromyard Avenue, Acton. Now to 1952, on routes formerly operated by the South Metropolitan Electric Tramways. Our special at Crystal Palace Terminus. Final look at the South in 1956. And now a very professionally made film looking at how the system reacted to a breakdown. This system of generating and distributing London transport's power has been carefully developed. Every foreseeable emergency is covered and cables carrying power to various points are so planned that if a breakdown occurs, an alternative route is ready. Sometimes the alternative comes in of its own accord. Sometimes a fault is indicated on the control panel and the operator merely throws a switch to remedy it. There may be times though when the unforeseeable does happen. Something big and unexpected. Something which is far beyond normal. And then... With the power off and vehicles brought to a sudden halt, lights on the panels in the control room have already indicated which areas are affected, and quick checks tell the operator that the fault cannot be immediately rectified. Within seconds, a tester is on his way to look into the trouble. Meanwhile, using his direct line, the control room operator must get things moving again as soon as possible. Welcome to the second in our series of archive programs on the trolley bus. All the material you're going to see comes from the archives of Peter Goddard, and it's all dispensation had to be granted for any double axle vehicle over 30 feet in length. Cardiff, in fact, once ran a fleet of single-deck vehicles, so she was not entirely out of place.
Back to Roth Depot and a battery manoeuvre. Like a motor bus, cannot be left in gear to prevent it from running away should the handbrake fail. In 1926, the first trolley bus ever built by the local firm of Guy Motors entered service in Wolverhampton. From then on, the Guy chassis were a dominant feature in the fleet. The Sunbeam chassis was also in evidence. Here's a wartime W-type, rebodied by Rowe, 